The first sermon I ever gave, I was in high school. It was at Christian Club, and it was, I, w I was like the, the president of the Christian Club, whatever, president, leader, I don't know what it was. But we would bring in speakers from all around town in Bakersfield and pastors from all over the city. And then one week, I was, I was asked to teach myself. And I went, you know what? That would be super interesting. And I read 20 minutes worth of time. And uh, it was Romans, I was supposed to be teaching something from Romans chapter 8. And uh, now today I would teach something really different from Romans chapter 8. You know, maybe about like the, uh, Romans 8 is a great passage on adoption or uh, being conformed to God's image or death, life, angels, principalities, nothing can separate us from God's love. But now I chose Romans 8, 37 because I loved how powerful it sounded. It says, no, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. I remember getting up there on the stage in our performing arts center with just a whole bunch of people, you know, hundreds of students staring up at me like, what are you going to do with this passage? And I, I, I said, you know, it, it's kind of cool when it says that we are more than conquerors. And I picture like a, a almost like a superhero. This was like my, my talk, like, you know, where it's like we are superheroes. And because God lives inside of us, look how strong we are, look how powerful we are. And I remember that was legitimately the extent of my explanation of it. And I was really into ninjas at that time in my life. Um, I was in the ninja club at my high school too. There was a pirates club and a ninja club. I never said I was a cool person. But, um, and so I'm like, yeah, it just kind of makes me think of that and how powerful I am. And and I'm, I'm, I think legitimately two or three minutes into my talk and I look down at my little clock and I'm thinking I'm, I've got to be almost at 20 minutes. And I realized I was about to start my closing prayer after three minutes of talking. And part of that's just obviously, in, it's your first time trying something. I was terrible at it, but I also for me, what was so funny is I had such a loose handle on scripture and, and such a terrible understanding, even in that passage, that I thought that kind of the way that we live our lives in this individualistic culture is we think that God's saying, oh, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror, right? Like there's conquerors all around the world, but, but I'm more than that. I'm more powerful than them. It was almost like self-help. Like, look how great I am. Look how powerful I am. Look how strong I am. Look how tall I am. Look how in intelligent I am. Look, how, look at me. 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 And scripture comes and it, it just decimates that narrative. And only recently, or since then, do I start digging into scripture and understanding when it says that we are more than conquerors, it has nothing to do with me. I, I think what the passage is actually trying to get at in Romans 8 verse 37, it says, No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then the next passage, Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angel nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul talks about a convincing that he has, but his convincing of not being overcome is because of who our Lord is and not who we are. And, and I think that's the, there's a phrase that's commonly said in Christian circles and it's a biblical phrase which says, like from the book of Deuteronomy, it, God gives us a command or gives the Israelites a command and says, you stand still, I'm going to go fight your battle for you. And I think that's what it means to be more than a conqueror is more than a conqueror is you're probably part of royalty. You're the prince. You're the prince who watches the conqueror go and win the battle for you. So when it says we are more than conquerors, it's not that we are superior in strength and intellect and, and power and that kind of stuff. It means that we are insufficient. We can't fight on our own. And so the king himself goes out before us. Jesus goes out before us and wins the battle. And, and I've got a lot of struggles and issues and trials in my life. And every time I puff myself up and go, I'm going to fix it, it just, I just create a dumpster fire and I make the mess worse. What I found is when I retract in and, and practice humility and surrender and I allow my king to go fight my battle and, and then I speak language that is kind and seasoned with salt and, and passionate yet still disciplined is when I find that my savior in what he has told me to do in obedience has won the battle already for me and my salvation and all those things, it's, it's all what he has done 
for me. So I think when it says we are more than conquerors, it simply means that the one who we get to call Father is the king of all things, not that we ourselves are anything uber significant. And I think that's something that I can rest in. It's all about who he is, and it's not dependent on who I am. We'll see you guys tomorrow.